Hello, I'm Carl Ross of the University of Portsmouth in the United Kingdom and today I'm going to give you a lecture on using the commercial 5 diamond computer packet answers to analyse the vibration, the free vibration of a composite model submarine pressure hull. So first I pick on preferences, I pick on structural, I pick on OK and then I pick on preprocessor and I pick on element type I put add and delete. I'm going to use a shell 93, which is suitable because I'm using ANSYS 11 shell 8093. Okay, close that. If you're using ANSYS 13, you've got to use the shell 281, which is slightly different input. It's a real constant. Let's put the thickness in. I put add. Okay, I put here one unit for the thickness. I'm this is only a demonstration. I would use kilograms, newtons, meters. Kilograms, newtons, meters, seconds. I'm putting one unit there, which is the thickness. If you put one, it assumes the thickness is constant throughout. Material properties. I pick on material models. I on structural. I pick on linear. I pick on elastic. And you could use isotropic, orthotropic, anisotropic. I'm going to use orthotropic. Again, I'm using arbitrary units. I would stick to kilograms, newtons, meters, and seconds. I put one. E5, whatever unit that is, and I go to the next one, which I put 5, E4, that was EX, EY, remember these are with respect to the local axis of the uh, elements, and I put 2, E4, for EZ, and the Poisson's ratio, I put 0.35, for XY, I put 0.3, for XZ, and 0 0.2, 0 0.3 for 0.3 for XZ and YZ. Okay, now the rigidity, you can't have Poisson's ratio greater than 0.5 or the material will disappear. So now I'll put the rigidity moduli. So I'll put 1E3 for XY, and then I'll put 5E4 uh, for YZ. 2E2 for XZ, and that's fine. You can put temperature as well. I remember I'm working with arbitrary units. I suggest you use kilograms, newton meters, and seconds. I press OK, and I put the density there. And I put a density again. If you use kilograms per meter cube, that's fine. But I'm just putting in something quite arbitrary to save time. With that, and that's fine. If you're using ANSYS 30 in the shell 281, then you can't use. Real constant to input your thickness. You've got to input your thickness by section, shell, layer, add layer, and you can put in all your properties. You can have several layers if you wish, but I'm just using one orthotropic material. And I'll put exit there, and now I'm going to model it. I'll put modeling, I'll put create my nodes, but I've got to be careful. I've got to change the coordinate system because it's easier to use. Global cylindrical, 20 days, and I'll put that in there. And I put an active coordinate system, and node one is uh, there's eight nodes. Node one, uh, I'm putting ten for the radius. If it's a uh, cone or a dome, then you've got to put in different radii. But for cylinder, that will remain constant, and the z will be zero because that's the origin for one. And node two is on the same z origin as node one, so I press that there. And the two, and the radius I put ten. The angle is the angle is minus 75 degrees and z is zero and i put angle three i put uh, x the uh, radius is 10 and the uh, angle remember i'm doing 30 degree sweep for the uh, for the shell so it's minus 60 and the, the z is zero so i do that i then pick on for node four which is the mid side node the radius is 10 the angle is uh minus 90 and uh, it's a 10 i'm gonna make the, the element 10 units long so at the mid side node will be five units which is half of that i press apply i'll then pick on the next node that was four i think i better do that one again better do that one again full apply i then take the fifth one and uh, i put that at minus 60 
and at 5 and I put apply do the mid side nodes and then go to the top with node 6 the radius is 10 the angle is minus 90 and it's a 10 unit length element so I put 10 in there that's a 6 and apply that and I pick on 7 put that there this is a mid side node which is 10 millimeters not 10 millimeters 10 units minus 75 is the angle and the radius is 10 units apply that and the last node is node 8 it's an 8 node element is a 10 radius the angle is minus 60 put that there and then I change and, that, and the and the length is 10 I push that there and I've got that there I don't like the look of that um, that uh, the, the, the view of that the bands will rotate and I put uh, bottom and there I've got it oh I've got an, I've got one missing I've got one missing so I better go back to my work plane better go back to my work plane and change the active corner system the global cylindrical and I've got to create another node and I'll put node 3 is minus is 10 node 3 and it's minus 60 and uh, the direction there is 0 so I'll put that apply there and there it is there uh, I've rescued that shows you can rescue it and I must change the work plane back to a Cartesian system and I'll do that shortly I'm now going to create my element I'll pick on create I'll pick on element there I pick on auto number, and I pick on through nodes, and you must pick it in this order one, two, three. If you don't do this, it won't work. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And pick that up there, and we go apply, and we've got our element, that's fine. Now I can't remember whether I change the work plane but I'll do it again because it doesn't have to do it twice I do that there to the global Cartesian and I'm going to copy this element so I look for copy I look for copy there is copy there is copy and I'm going to put copy the elements auto numbered and I pick that element there and I'm going to make three copies of that element and this is the reason I've got the Cartesian coordinates so if I would apply there I've got three copies to make the nodes increase with each element by five, five nodes. The offset, the Z offset, the Z direction is 10. So I press OK. Oh, that's a mistake there. Let's put 10 there. We've got that right. We put OK. And I've got three elements there. I must change my work plane back to a global cylindrical. I'll tell you that in a minute. Because I pick on copy again. Pick on copy. Auto numbered. And I pick on that that and that and i go up there i press apply and now it's remember we, the shell with 30 degree so this 12 30s make uh, 360 and i've got to make this 18 nodes because with each column of elements the numbers increase by 18 and then the what it says why there is in fact it's double uh, uh, cylindrical minus 30 degrees I put that there and put apply there you are I've got my model and that's fine but that's not finished because I've, uh, the trouble with this model is that it's uh, it's uh, um, it's I'm going to pick on numbering controls and I'm going to merge the items the items are all loose they're going to be merged they're going to be compressed and I've done that I've compressed them I've now got my model, I pick on plot. Well we had a slight hiccup then due to the length of the video. So I'm going to restrain this model and I pick on solution. I pick on define loads and I pick on apply. I pick on structural and I pick on displacement. I put it on nodes and I'm going to box this in here. I'm going to be careful. I box this in here. I'm going to fix it on the right side. The box out there. I'm going to make all the degrees of freedom zero there because I'm going to uh, fix.
fix it on the right side. So I press apply. I press all degrees of freedom. OK. And now I'm going to go on the nodes again. This time I'm going to box it here. And I've got to be careful. I don't go too far to the right. Because I might, I might fix some miss side nodes. I go up there. Press apply. And I'm going to simply support it on the left. Put UX, UY0. Press OK. That's fine. Now, I've got to take analysis type. See that there? We've got a new analysis. And I'm going to do a modal analysis. It's a vibration. I press OK. And then I've got a bridge menu here. So I need my other bridge menu. I press that. Presenters analysis options. I put number of nodes to extract, which is going to be six, and the number of nodes to, to extract, number of nodes to expand. I put six there, put a lot more if I want to, but they'll be fine. Press OK, and I'll press, this is fine, I'll press OK, and I'll put solve, comment LS, that, and there you are, OK, I do that, and I've done it. I've done my mode analysis, a vibration analysis, and now I'm going to go to the post processor. So I go to general post proc, I pick on read results, I pick on the first set, I'm going to put plot results, and then I'm going to go up here to plot, I'm going to put deform shape. If I do that, deform shape, okay, that, and then I'm going to go up here, do plot controls, I'm going to animate it. I'm going to put mode shape, and this is fine. The time delay is too big, so I'm going to make a 0.075. And I'll put OK. There you are. And then I've got my th my submarine vibrating, my model submarine, composite submarine vibrating. I don't like that particular view, so I'm going to change the view to the press controls, put turn zone rotate, and I'm going to take front there. And I'm going to put Plot controls and animate it. Look, we've got mode shape. There we are, it's 0.075 the time delay. And there we've got a nice mode of vibration, which is two lobes. The vessel is overling. So I'll close this and then I'll pick on the next set. And the next set, the read result, the next set is going to be exactly the same as the first set, 90 degrees out of phase. So I'm going to pick on then the set after the next set, so I press next twice, I pick on plot controls, and I pick on animate, and uh, I pick on mode shape, and uh, the time delay is fine. And there we are, we've got three lobes, three circumferential waves, and that's very pretty. And that is, go to the second mode, although in practice it's really the third mode. I close that, and then I'm going to pick on the next. The next set is the same as this, 90 degrees out of phase. So I'm going to press next set twice. I want the one after the next set. I press plot controls. I press animate. Big mode shape. And I press this. And there you are. Oh, I've got a cantilever mode. That's interesting. It's a cantilever mode. Well, that's the end of my lecture. So I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. At this point, I'd like to thank my colleague, Dr. Andrew Little for helping me of the University of Portsmouth, together with my former colleague, Terry, who has done an enormous amount of work in this field. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.